Good day, everyone. Welcome to our live webinar, Lessons on Remote Work During the Pandemic. Today, we are joined by industry leaders for us to understand the evolution of work, working remotely in today's new normal. We have impressive speakers today, and I'm excited to introduce them to you all. Joining us today is Ara Prado, Global Marketing Manager of Tech One Global Group and Anadoc. Ara is a digital marketing enthusiast with almost a decade of experience in the field specializing in search engine optimization and search engine marketing. She is a seasoned marketer who, is now, who now leads a young, diverse, and talented team coming together from different countries and backgrounds. On the roster, we also have Akfash Latibu, Modern, work, work, modern Workplace Solutions um, of Microsoft. He is a passionate collaborator, team-oriented advisor in a wide array of IT sectors from technical consulting, sales, customer support, training to product management. This paved the way for him to be awarded as the most valuable professional with technical expertise in IT Pro since 2010. Today, he is one of the modern workplace security experts in Microsoft. He has been in the forefront of digital transformation initi initiatives across Sri Lanka, focusing on security, collaboration, and productivity. And of course, we also have Lars Jepsen, CEO and co-founder of Tech One Global Group and Anadoc. Lars is an IT entrepreneur, business adventurer, and guerrilla marketer with a wealth of experience in enterprise content management, content service platform, digital transformation, social media marketing, entrepreneurship, RPA, and workflow automation. He is a graduate of Harvard Business School and master's from IMD Business School with a vision of giving back to the community through education. All right, so how are you guys? How's it going? Thank you very much. Doing good. <laughs> That's great to hear. Thanks. How about you, uh, Ara and Akash? We're I'm doing, doing good. Thank you so much. <laughs> That's good to hear. And I'm sure we have an insightful hour ahead of us. So let's jump right to it. Okay. So for the first question, I'd like to address this to Lars first. So the recent pandemic has caused organizations and industries to pivot to working from home. So what are the effects of this sudden change, Lars? Well, I think if, if you go back to the, uh, you said the recent uh, pandemic, it's kind of, uh, you know, for most people, it's still going on. And, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, for some for some countries and some people, it's like coming back again. So uh, I think I would take that in two steps. When, when we first started to see uh, uh, the pandemic rolling out in the start of the year, uh, for many organizations, it became... Uh, obvious that they need to accelerate their digital transformation to be able to uh, cope with the, uh, the, 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 the new way of uh, uh, doing business, attending schools, doing yoga classes, whatever you do <laughs> online or whatever you did in person before, including ordering food and everything else, you know, had to suddenly go online very fast. Uh, so I think the first couple of months was very much uh, focused on that effort. And, and mm -hmm. of course, uh, uh, we have been working with many organizations and many clients over the years on digital transformation, and it's it was it was great to see that those uh, organizations who were ready could kind of almost go on as I wouldn't say as if nothing happened, but at least uh, in a more uh, 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 more uh, a seamless kind of way. Our own organization, for example, we could work from home. Uh, uh, from day to day. Uh, so, so the majority of our business people were able to work from home. The, 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 the business that was impacted was the business where we have to be at the customer side to do services, for example. That, that uh, is still a challenge until today because there's still restrictions in terms of, of uh, getting into offices and work there. Uh, uh, you know, with our uh, BPO staff and scanning projects and things like this. But, but for most organizations, I would say that the pandemic was first a, a kind of a structure channel challenge, a technical challenge, and then it became much more about the new workplace and how you manage people remotely. Like, like uh, uh, you, we have people in this time who joined our company 
who have never seen anybody in our company in person. Uh, mm -hmm. That kind of onboarding of new employees, uh, organizational changes where, uh, you know, a, 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 a new manager would take over a team, but without really having the chance to meet with them, uh, you know, face to face. So suddenly it became more of the workplace uh, psychological things uh, uh, going forward is, I think, more the challenges that you're having now. The, the technical uh, things are more or less ironed out. I think most organizations would know what to do. And if they don't know what to do, they know how to, you know, get help. Uh, and 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 uh, then it's just a matter of doing that uh, process and making that investment to be able to work from home. So that's that's how I kind of see that question. Uh, of course, uh, you know my two uh, uh, co-speakers here have a different uh, uh, angles uh, as everybody has, but that's my view. Right. Thank you so much for that, Lars. Um, how about you, Akfash? Uh, would you like to add anything to that? Yeah, great insights uh, by Lars, you know, as always. And, uh, you know, uh, from my perspective, like what uh, Satya mentioned, we've seen like two years worth of digital transformation in just mm -hmm. two months, right? And it's, it's true, right? So in the past few months, so due to this uh, global pandemic, you know, organizations, uh, ones who had like you no know, second thoughts of moving into cloud or digitally transforming right were forced to embrace this digital transformation technologies overnight right we saw that right yeah. and uh, you know uh, many companies who had uh, a visionary leadership you know both in business and in it uh, uh, embraced uh, no who 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 took these digital digital tools way before this pandemic they made they made few changes to their existing setup Right to accommodate this uh, new normal that uh, uh, we all are facing today, versus the uh, uh, um, uh, the companies who are thinking whether to you know uh, 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 move into digital, move into cloud or not. Previously, they were just wearing the thinking hats on after the pandemic happened. So this shows you know uh, uh, the importance of digital transformation in the long run. And of course, you know when it when it when it comes to certain uh, industries like we saw retail customers or retail companies who were using cloud technologies immediately expanded you know their systems by 10x or even more to cater to millions of their customers through uh, e-commerce websites right mm -hmm. we saw uh, trans transportation as well as uh, delivery companies who expanded their infrastructure uh, you know with a blink of an eye to cater uh, to all these uh, uh, door-to-door -door delivery services when everybody was, you know, stuck at home with all the uh, uh, daily essentials. Imagine, so so all these things were possible because uh, the characteristics of cloud uh, uh, technology, because cloud technology is robust. It is uh, uh, highly scalable, available. It has the uh, uh, elasticity component coming into it. So. A, a, a pandemic or, or anything uh, like this happens, you know, with just few clicks, you could, you know, uh, upgrade your hardware and cater to more, 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 more customers, more users that you want to. Imagine if these companies were on an on-prem uh, uh, environment. Mm -hmm. Right, the amount of time that they have to spend on bringing down hardware, setting up new, you know, software to it, right? All of those, you know, uh, it, it, it will take a lot of time, right? So. Of course, uh, to cater to this new normal, uh, collaboration platforms right uh, came mm -hmm. in handy. Companies who embraced all of these technologies before they were, you know, pioneering it, and they were uh, 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 having the advantage, I would say, over the others, right? So uh, when we look into uh, uh, tools like uh, Microsoft 365 uh, and uh, Azure at the center. Right, was was right. adopted by millions uh, uh, overnight by almost all industries. Like tools such as Teams and OneNote empowered organizations to um, unlock everything from telemedicine to e-learning, purely mm -hmm. because the new way of uh, working has changed. It's about uh, video conferencing solutions. You know that. Uh, 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 it's 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 not about the video conferencing solution. I would say it's 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 about how we can have that collaborative workspace that we used to have in our workplaces, you know, uh, uh, way back, right? Mm -hmm. And and uh, Teams and my modern I'm uh, uh, M365 does that in a secure way, protecting your corporate data and uh, resources. So this 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 is my point of view and how I look at. The, uh, uh, this whole transformation thing that happened in the past couple of months. 
Yeah. Well, I totally agree with you on that, Akfash. As, as Lars mentioned, from the organizational um, transition, um, from being in the office to working remotely, and of course, as you uh, relating to what you have mentioned, transitioning or adapting to the usage of modern workplace solutions, right? And so with that, uh, with those changes, right, I'd like to address the next question to Ara. So given those challenges and given the, you know, the need to immediately transition to a digital workplace, what were the biggest challenges or um, hardest adjustments that employees had to make? Um, yeah, can you share your thoughts on that, Ara? Sure, sure thing. Um, so I think one of the biggest challenges that organizations really, you know, one of the challenges that they had to face during this pandemic is the fact that they were not ready. A lot of organizations were not ready for the work from home setup. They don't, they don't have that in place. They're not familiar with how to even start. So that was a huge adjustment. Um, personally speaking, I know, I, you know, I know a lot of people, a lot of employees from other companies who had to go without pay for a few weeks, actually even a couple of months, because their companies don't know how to start, you know, enabling them to work from home. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so since they're not working, they're not getting paid, right? So that was one of the biggest challenges that um, really affected these employees. Um, but I'm just, you know, speaking uh, from the standpoint of, of me working from Tap One, it's actually really great because we've always had a flexible work environment. Um, right. We're not strangers with um, remote work, work from home. So switching to working from home full time wasn't really that big of an adjustment. It was like, okay, we're doing this full time now. So so it's it's quite okay. But I think, you know, on top of that, um, when, when people started working from home, one of the biggest challenges that is quite realistic as well, that I think a lot of people, a lot of employees, a lot of teams um, encounter every day is finding a good spot in their homes, finding a mm -hmm. good space to do these meetings, a quiet environment, you know, to, to do serious meetings because if a baby is crying in the background or if your if your background is you know a bunch of a, a pile of dirty laundry then that's not professional right so that was one of the biggest challenges a lot of um, employees had to uh, face as well but mm -hmm. uh, thinking about a solution because um, a lot of there are organizations or companies now that are providing virtual backgrounds. And what's great about Teams is it's easy to integrate uh, virtual backgrounds. So even if you have a messy background or, you know, it's just you just don't want to deal with what's happening there, you can use these, these virtual backgrounds. And um, in fact, um, just to just to mention it real quick, um, our, our sister company, Image Perfect, actually creates um, branded virtual backgrounds. So mm -hmm. it's much more professional for organizations to use because you can upload, you can have your logo there on the side. So when you're attending meetings, when you have external um, external parties in the meeting, then you know you're establishing your brand. So that's very good. Um, but yeah, I think the fact of the matter is the the root cause is that organizations, a lot of organizations, are not prepared to do the work from home or to handle the work from home setup. And that has branched out to different problems. But there are a lot of solutions to to address those issues. For example, mm -hmm. just with Microsoft Teams, uh, because of this, this, uh, this collaboration, communication collaboration tool, it's easy to communicate with your team, with 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 your organization, just keep in touch, you can you can do it via chat, you can uh, do it via video calling. It's so easy. You can collaborate on there if you have to work on a document, um, especially when we do in the marketing team. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's, and we often work on documents together. So we really, I, you know, as, as a team and as a, as a manager, I really appreciate that because things get done quickly. We don't need to sit together to, you know, get the ball rolling. It's, it's right there. It's all in there. 
Um, and uh, for employees, we have uh, the MyHCM app just to, uh, you know, quickly log in your time for the day, um, also to process leaves. So it, mm -hmm. it's really easy. Um, yeah, so I think uh, just if anything, the biggest, probably one of the biggest challenges as well that uh, employees are facing because we've been in, we've been in the work from home setup for almost 10 months or like nine months or so. Mm -hmm. um, biggest challenges is the lack of, of um, physical social interaction with yeah. your colleagues, right? Um, and it does get to you sometimes because I guess it's still different when you're going into an office, you can see your colleagues, it puts you in a professional headspace, I feel like. Mm -hmm. True. Um, yeah, but, you know, again, um, we do, we, we make do with what we have. And um, a lot of these, again, Microsoft Teams collaboration tool, um, communication tool, there's a lot of things you can do with it. It's not just like for professional use. If you guys want to yeah. have fun, um, if you want to have, you know, um, after hour, um, you know, chats with the team, upload fun backgrounds, which is what we do, right? We upload uh, <laughs> backgrounds, we, we catch up with each other and just make sure that, you know, we don't really talk about work. Uh, and then we just catch up and just uh, make sure that we check in on um, uh, in on one another, make sure that you're all good, you're not encountering any problems, and you're, you know, employee wellness, I feel like. Yeah. You just have to keep on checking on each other, right? And it's great because we have we have um, every Friday this this uh, Kahoot uh, game. Which, yeah. <laughs> you know, you know it, it, it's really a great icebreaker. And it gets everyone in the organization to sort of like you know play play against each other but also communicate and just joke around at, at that time there are no boundaries there are no bosses there are no like you know it, everyone is 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 uh, sort of like fair game you're competing with each other so that's great it's a great way to just once again tie in with uh, with everyone so yeah that's that's it for me it is, yeah. Well, I totally agree with you, Ara. And thank you so much for, you know, um, pinpointing the challenges, but also highlighting what's, uh, what are the best practices and what have been, you know, um, the things that we're doing, not just us, but also other organizations to make do with, assume, to make do with what we have. And it's really amazing that we do have this collaboration tools in place, um, such as Microsoft Teams, since as you've mentioned, some applications like, um, say, MyHCM, where you can log in your, your leaves, your requests, and also um, we do have, like, collaboration collaboration system and um, con document management system where you can like say have your documents um, signed um, by your bosses you don't have to you know send the, the physical documents and these are here these are in place because of digital transformation and that's very important and so leading to that I'd like to ask the next question to Lars first so given the some of the best practices mentioned by Ara I think you can definitely elaborate more on this what have been the best practices for remote work in the past, say, nine months, and what did not work? Can you uh, share your experiences on that, Lars? Yeah, I, <clears throat> what did not work? I, I mean, I think the the the, the bigger challenge uh, in remote work is related to the um, to to the psychology of. Uh, uh, the, the employees. I mean, the mm -hmm. well-being, the burnout. I mean, uh, we, 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 uh, we are working from home. We have our kids at home, so they are studying at home. So we are also like become online parents, uh, teachers, assistants. Uh, uh, our family is, is uh, not with us as much as we used to be. I mean, not the direct family unit, but the ones, uh, uh, you know, the in-laws and, and uh, other people that we used to see, the cousins and things. And, and, and as a work from home uh, parent, you have to deal with all of this stuff. Not, you don't have to just deal with your work. Uh, mm -hmm. You have to deal with so many other things. So if there's something that I would say that is that technology, all the technologies that was mentioned here, they were already there. Right. This time last year, we could have done exactly the same. 
they have been optimized for sure. I mean, some development has been fast tracked. I mean, if if you if you look, for example, at our own uh, uh, products like Inadoc Sign, is something we fast tracked because we saw that one of the few reasons you need to go to the office is to sign something. And of right. course, there are other applications to sign, but we felt that having one inside your document management system is the right place to do it. So we fast tracked that, and we kind of evolved our business around this new normal, including what Aro was mentioning about the work from home backgrounds. I mean, today our call is done in in StreamYard, which doesn't really yeah. give us that facility. But when we do our normal calls in Teams or Zoom or whatever technology, we have this virtual background. And we even made one now for Christmas. So that means we have a Christmas theme background. So I think all the technology is, is kind of working fairly well. I mean, we have the odd, you know, power outage or, you know, internet connectivity problem. I mean, after all, we are living in, in Southeast Asia and Asia, all of us uh, who are who are in this world. But, but, um, Technology is kind of uh, solid, I would say. It's not that is not the biggest problem. The, right. the the biggest learning that I have seen is that the 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 other companies you have to deal with, if they are not, you know, running as fast as you are, then you're kind of running, and then anyway you have to go back. I, for for example, for me personally, the only reason I have to go and do anything outside my house in terms of business in these days is when I have to go every two weeks to the bank and sign all the documents, which I have already signed online. So I think our banks have been very flexible. They accept any transaction from us by signing online, but they mm -hmm. still require me to go there every two weeks or once a month. And they have like a stack of papers like this because I maybe have, I'm signing something like 10, 15 pages every day. So literally when I go there, there's a few hundred pages that I have to sign. I mean, I have to countersign. They have already my electronic signature there yeah. but I have to physically signed so so what is not working is is that there's still organizations or uh, uh, you could say procedures structures regulations that are not mm -hmm. transformed where we are you know ahead and then we have to go back ahead and then we right. have to go back. but uh, 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 so those are the two things uh, that i would say have been the things that have not really worked uh, that well but but uh, yeah. uh, actually i would say the technology and the procedures it worked better than i had anticipated uh but now after like nine ten months at home we are starting to feel a burnout that we maybe not had expected to start with right well that is good news to be honest knowing that there may be these processes right we we move forward but we have to go back but i think in the next few months, as we learn, uh, as we experience things, as we go along, definitely these things will still improve, right? Yes. So anything you'd like to add to that, Akfash? Sorry. Um, okay. I, I echo with what last uh, and Ara mentioned uh, uh, earlier mm -hmm. on, right? So uh, if we really look at uh, today after this uh, or oh, while this pandemic is going on life and work you know uh, uh, has changed overnight for everyone so all of a sudden you know we've gone from working from conference rooms to working in living living rooms right and uh, 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 this means that we need to have a lot of uh, audio video conferencing and so on so if you really look at uh, uh, apart from the technology, technological change that we've uh, uh, been going through, like, you know, we've taken our meetings more digital today. We've taken almost all the calls digital. If you look at uh, certain different business uh, verticals like marketing, all the in-person events have turned into virtual events, right? And mm -hmm. uh, if you look into HR function, job interviews specifically have gone into virtual uh, uh, interviews uh, as well as certain other functions right so this has not been for uh, uh, just one or two divisions it's across every division and uh, apart from this technological change it's the mindset change that has to be there and that that mindset or this change management that we are looking at is a bit slow in 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 other ways right so with that uh, uh, i think what we've seen is we've seen that there is a hike on the number of meetings that every single person used to have previously uh, before pandemic and after pandemic the the birth of short meetings like meetings which range from 
range up to 30 minutes is on the rise now right so yeah. everything happens like you know you just put a social one on one or a, or a, a, a quick catch up with someone right so in order to uh, uh, overcome those this is where we have uh, companies uh, uh, have adopted more water cooler chats right or uh, town halls right mm -hmm. and uh, and so on right more frequent uh, one on ones with uh, with with colleagues with their uh, immediate managers or line managers whoever it is right so these sort of catch ups these sort of uh, uh, meetings uh, are in the process of you know uh, uh, helping the other as well as mentally as well as work related stuff and all of the, that particular angle yeah so that's a little bit from my side you're right. So I totally agree, Akfash. So more than technological advancements, it is really also very important that we look into a wellness of people, as what Ara and Lars mentioned earlier, right? And these uh, check-ins, like 30-minute meetings, uh, just check-in with people, it's very important, especially in this, in this time that we still have, right? And so with that, um, going to the next question, I'd like to uh, address this to uh, Lars first. So with work from home here to stay, um, what should organizations do to sustain their business? Because definitely um, this will still go on, right? So what is your advice uh, for organizations to continue uh, growing their businesses? Yeah. Yeah, so so uh, I, I think it's uh, pretty straightforward, but uh, uh, Ara was talking a bit about it earlier. Um, we, we put a lot of effort, we put a lot of thinking and a lot of investment and money into our physical spaces, our office space. And mm -hmm. with uh, people working from home, uh, most organizations are looking at reducing the office space because uh, uh, they realize that uh, um, there's other benefits from working at for working from home. I mean, in, in, in a year's time, uh, we have to assume that with the vaccinations and things, pandemic will have uh, brought back a more normal life across most countries in the world. Uh, but uh, we don't really envision that the work from home is going to go away. Uh, uh, we, we, uh, we, we live uh, in, in many of us live in countries where the daily commute could be anything from uh, uh, one hour to two or three hours if you combine morning and evening. And especially right. if you use public transport, I mean, if you live in Singapore, fine. Uh, if you live in Copenhagen, fine. But if you live in uh, Jakarta or Metro Manila uh, uh, and want to take public tra transport for your for your office commute every day, it's it's uh, it's at least an hour to a half uh, every morning. And we just don't want to put that pressure on our uh, people anymore. If they can work mm -hmm. from home as well. So just going back to the question. Uh, when when we save money on one hand, we have to invest that money on the other hand as well. That means we need to uh, help people to create that space at home. Uh, we need to uh, give them allowances for electricity, for uh, consumption of electricity, consumption of internet, and uh, maybe help them with the furniture, the technology, and so on. So work from home uh, equipment, devices need to be a part of the of the uh, budget of the company going forward. And of course, now mm -hmm. we're going to reduce the budget on other things, but we're not going to reduce our overall spending. It will be just shifted from one to another. So I think most companies kind of uh, uh, said, okay, we, 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 we are panicking uh, because uh, you know we don't know where things are going. And of course, a lot of, uh, of this uh, investment came on the shoulders of the employees in the first few months. They bought you know microphones and headsets and office chairs and, uh, all this stuff, but eventually that has to shift back to, you know, uh, 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 it's either that when you employ people, you have to talk about how are you working from home? Do you have a setup? And we take that as a part of the discussion when we hire people, or we have to equip people to work from home. Also, I, I, I think the office PC is dead. I mean, I don't see any normal offices anymore buying normal standard PCs because if mm -hmm. people should be able to bring back their laptop and work from home, uh, and and uh, for for sure that's a that's a, a thing that that we are looking at. Uh, uh, bring your own device, for example. Give people allowance for using their own devices and stuff is something we have pioneered as well in our organization. And mm -hmm. and work from home policies in terms of uh, 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 proper insurance, proper uh, environment, and things like this. So so there, there's a whole framework that you have to look into 
uh, when 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 you want to work from home. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that, Lars. It's really taking into um, consideration a lot of factors, right? Um, Ara, would you like to add anything to what uh, Lars mentioned? Yes, yes. Um, actually, I have a couple of points. I completely Great. agree with everything that um, Lars mm -hmm. mentioned. Um, but a couple of other things, uh, and this is something that I'm, you know, speaking yeah. about personally, and I also know a lot of people going through this. So first is, you know, as much as possible, businesses or these organizations have to start getting rid of the uh, eight, um, eight, nine hour, um, eight to five work right. hour um, mindset. You have to you have to start being flexible with the working hours because people most people assume that when you're working from home it's all rainbows and butterflies but if you're like a single parent who has to work clean the house cook food for the family make sure that your child is bathed etc it's hard to agree with that statement so unlike before when you have to go to the office and you're just, everything is just there you're in the office your focus is work mm -hmm. and then when you get home then that is like your work time nowadays everything is sort of mixed up and, and confused. There is no fixed working hours. There is mm -hmm. no fixed home hours. It's all combined. So this is a reality that, that I think organizations have to accept and You're adapt right. to. Um, they have to think about their workers' wellness while they're at home um, because they're not just stressed out with, with work stuff. They're also being stressed out about what's happening at home. And that's mm -hmm. not even kind of considering what's happening outside their homes, right? With the current pandemic, et cetera, et cetera. So organizations have to listen to these problems, to, to the woes of the employees or something, and be agile, adapt to it. Because nowadays, organizations who, who can't adapt, I think, you know, it's not an exaggeration to say that they're probably going to, gonna you know, not going to go, not going to, I guess, um, go through adapt this. Or die. Yeah, adapt, yeah, <laughs> swimmingly. They're probably going to suffer. Um, and another thing, like uh, Lars mentioned it. So at times he has to, you know, the only time he has to go out is to, to go to the bank, sign some documents. It's it's not just, you know, it, it's it's a common thing in an organization to, you know, sign, sign documents, pass these documents onto one another, um, I have to go find a certain document that hasn't been digitized and I, it's really important. So I have to go to the office. So it's, it's a big problem, but there's an easy solution to it if you think about it. And if, mm -hmm. you're, if, you're, if your employees are saying that this is a problem that they've been encountering, because like, how are you supposed to, for example, like if, if you left your, your important documents at the office and then the lockdown happened, and then all of a sudden they're asking you to, you know, send in, send in these documents and, um, you know, provide the following, et cetera. But that's at the office. So you have to go there. So, so that on its own, like if you think about it, that could easily be, be um, solved um, by digitizing the documents. And if you have a document management solution, then you have a way of, of getting these documents, accessing them from wherever you are securely. Right. So again, these are the things that you have, you know, organizations have to listen to, the decision makers have to listen to and address, right? right. Um, not just, you know, that's what they're saying, but like, so you have to really put an action to that. To that. And as, as Lars, Lars also mentioned, you know, investing in, in an optimal work from home setup. Mm -hmm. for staff. Um, I actually know uh, a few big companies that have opted to really help their employees um, have a comfortable work from home setup by sending them um, computer units. They even have comfortable chairs uh, that they also sent them and provide um, extra money for internet and electricity, as, as uh, Lars also, also mentioned. Although, uh, truthfully speaking, this is not possible for all organizations, especially if you're an SMB. But mm -hmm. You know, start for it's best to start from somewhere, right? Um, your employees would appreciate anything that you do to help this transition become easier for them. Um, and I think the last thing that I want to say is, is provide a learning and development um, opportunities. So right. after the pandemic, it has actually proven that this is a good time for, for employees, for people 
um, to hone in their, their skills or learn new skills and, you know, get certified in certain things, right? Um, so if, if organizations could, you know, encourage um, online learning or, you know, these, these certifications more, then mm -hmm. not, not only are their employees um, growing, you know, for themselves, but they're also growing for the company because whatever they learn from, from these, these, um, these courses, um, from these studies, then it's also being applied to their organization. Right. Um, Correct. So yeah, that's, that's it. Um, oh, of course, like, um, regular ritual contact, which, which Akpash also <laughs> mentioned earlier. Right. So that is very important. Um, just check in, make sure that your employees are still sane, that they're still happy, <laughs> um, that they're still in the proper uh, proper headspace. And again, employee wellness, very important because your employees, when they're happy, they would be even happier to perform well for your organization, right? So it's a cycle. That's it. For sure. Thank you so much for that. Uh, very well said, Ara. And yeah, we that's really, I think, on a personal standpoint, as an employee as well, um, it's very important what uh, Lars and Ara mentioned that first reallocating budget and helping your um, employees be equipped and working from home. And of course, making sure that we totally understand where our employees are. Because right now it's very difficult you know, to draw the line between work and home because it's it's merged together, right? Yeah. And yeah. so- I think Lars has something to add. Lars, yeah, go I just ahead, wanted to add something. I was very polite. I just wrote in the chat, I had something <laughs> to add. So yeah, no, I, I just wanted to, uh, one of the things Ara said was, uh, uh, you, you know, a very important uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 to me as well is that as, as a business owner, of course, I, mm -hmm. I talk, to other business owners where uh, 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 you might talk to other of your friends who are working for other companies. The question I get is that, how do you make sure they work if they are mm -hmm. at home? Yeah. Do they really work at home? Are they really working, you know, that time or are they just on TikTok or, uh, you know, whatever uh, uh, game they're playing? And I, I think this is, the, this is going to be the major roadblock for organizations to digitally transform and to get something out of this uh, uh, pandemic that and and uh, you know to use the term that Arab was scared of saying to adapt or die uh, you know <laughs> that, that you have to you have to transform your organization from a uh, clocking in clocking out and uh, being monitored by the employees to a uh, a, a kind of a, um Output -based. More K outcome based KPI based. Okay, this is what we agreed that we will get delivered this month, and then you know we deliver that. And it's not about did I do it at two o'clock in the morning or five o'clock in the morning or at eight o'clock or whatever it is. Uh, so, so I think with the globalization, that is anyway also taking a bit of a, 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 a maybe a sidetrack to a time as well, because like in our organization, we have people working at, uh, at different time zones mm -hmm. and uh, that can also uh, stretch your day. And we also have to make sure that if we have that flexible uh, time, let's say for example, okay, in Philippines traditionally, we had office hours from nine to five and that's fine. You know, people mm -hmm. come and they leave at five o'clock. Now it's, it, it's open. That means we don't have a reporting time because you work from home and you have KPIs. But now we also have to start to respect that, okay, maybe you work at two o'clock in the morning, but I don't. So, mm -hmm. you know, so so uh, I, I have seen like in certain countries, like I think it's in France, it's illegal to send an email to your employees after working hours. But, you know, if people are working in different time zones and different times of the day, you also have to learn yourself when is the time to, you know, take your phone and switch it off. You know, uh, right. you know, not have uh, notifications, uh, you know, after dinner or whenever you're not working anymore. Switch off the phone or set your notifications, you know, that that uh, that you are the one who control it now because you are the one who uh, who need more flexibility. So you cannot expect everybody to know what is your time. It, like mm -hmm. you don't know my time. I don't know your time. Right. So now I will communicate when I'm working, but I'm not should not expect that you're also working at the same time. So it, there's a cultural thing that has to be changed as well. But I think it's very important. And many organizations have adapted 
uh, this uh, structure of more flexibility when you work from home. So right. that, that's uh, completely, uh, you know, aligned with uh, uh, what I'm saying as well. We have no uh, tools to screenshot, you know, every five minutes what people <laughs> are doing and things like this. Yeah, you're laughing, but, but uh, this is what's happening. I mean, people are really asking these questions. How right. do you manage that? You know, I, I get calls and say, oh, I, I attended your webinar. I saw your post. But how do you make sure people actually work when they're at home? Mm -hmm. because they have all these disturbances that Ara was saying, which is true. We all have that. I also have kids at home, right? I also mm -hmm. get disturbed, but, uh, you know, then we just have to manage it in some other way. So, yeah, that was my little in-between. Yeah, right. Well, actually, that's very important, Lars. And thank you so much for saying that, because hearing it from from the point of view of a business owner, it's sort it's very refreshing to be honest. Because most of the most some or like most of the business owners, they're really into um the the, the trick to the working hours. But it's very important also to consider now with the setup that we have that. Regardless of the time, when they're, when people are doing their work, what's important is that they get things done, right? And they deliver. So with that, um, we'd like to move forward to the next because it's actually related to what we just uh, talked about, right? So with, can you share with us um, your organization's strategy um, in terms of effectively supporting your organization's remote workforce? Well, we have already mentioned um, some of this already earlier, um, but maybe uh, we can have some insights from you, Akfash. So I would like to touch base from the previous question that was answered, right? So one thing that I would like to highlight is it's not only about the organization's uh, uh, change, it also the employees also who will have to change because change end of the day is the only constant Correct. that's gonna be there. And uh, uh, both, right? So uh, apart from that, uh, when it comes to, uh, 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 the other tools and technologies, apart from what Lars and uh, Ara was mentioning, we definitely will have to consider with the technological uh, uh, deployments or rolling out that comes in, we'll have to consider of security, which is another important part because today, um, we are working from home using our own devices at times, or we have a lot of corporate data that we manage from outside of corporate network. So this is where we will have to relook at on how security has been implemented and uh, 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 what sort of policies that we will have to uh, uh, deploy within uh, uh, our organization as well as uh, for the work from home culture that the organization is gonna come in. Right. So including of protecting our IPs, our ideas, our data information that the organization has and so on and so forth. So this could be from uh, labels. This could be from encryption. This could be from different policies that would uh, uh, travel with the data to uh, to the uh, end uh, of wherever the data wants to uh, be sent to. And also. Uh, we'll have to implement the right uh, uh, policies in order to manage the devices that would be connecting to uh, the corporate network, starting from, uh, last was mentioning BYOD, right? So that's uh, another point where uh, um, when uh, the desktops, whichever that was in the office is not connected to the cloud or does not have a central storage space, which can be accessed by multiple devices like OneDrive, Right. So uh, if you do have that or if you do not have that, whichever the device that you are going to access your corporate network from a remote network, you need to manage those devices, whether it has been patched, whether it, it has the right uh, uh, Windows updates or whether it has the uh, right uh, uh, antivirus or the endpoint protection or in, endpoint detection uh, uh, updates that comes in. Right. So you need to have a framework in order to support all of those in order to be more productive in a, in, uh, in this secure uh, 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 requirement, right? Because we saw in the past, in the past few months that uh, that uh, uh, hacking incidents or security uh, incidents were at, at a rise, right? Especially when 
mm-hmm. uh, government organizations as well as uh, e-commerce websites were uh, on the rise and everybody was logging in everybody was doing their transactions digitally government collaborations uh, communications were happening on top of digital platforms so this is where bad actors started to uh, uh, penetrate into these networks these uh, uh, systems that we have so if we are to move into a digital world if we are to change if we need to have a strategy for the organizations to uh, move forward with this we also would have to make sure that uh, our environment our policies our uh, uh, users employees everyone is secure and have the right uh, uh, platform to address all of this right thank you so much for that akash so it's really about framework and security right um anything you'd like to add to that lars uh i i just uh, uh you know i think i think there's a there's a mentality that uh, we are used to so much of uh, free stuff uh when we, when it comes mm-hmm. to solutions uh we have free email uh, solutions we have free facebook we have free youtube we have so many things for free yeah. that uh, when we have to digitally transform the easiest thing is to go online and get something for free right but but uh, you have to remember that there, this is not a viable solution you have to invest in technology the same way you would have invested in any other thing uh, you know otherwise you will not get a a, a platform that is uh, you know first of all is secure uh, mm-hmm. keep your data where your data is supposed to be and give access to the people who are supposed to get access and let your people work seamlessly and in an integrated way without you know working in different islands or pockets or rabbit holes of solutions that does not talk to the other one right i mean a video conferencing yeah. system here collaboration software here email system software there you know i think that is where we have seen a, a huge uh, drive for the microsoft platform because it's integrated teams is not a video conferencing tool it is a collaboration tool and a video conferencing tool and so so many other things that you today we hardly use any more email we live inside these applications so when they are connected and the data is shared within that platform it's highly secure and it's highly collaborative and it's a completely new way of working so actually this is one of the biggest challenges i see is that all of this change is coming in a very very short time so good things mm-hmm. that like ara was mentioning that a lot of companies are endorsing or endorsing and uh, are motivating people for education training because there is a lot of learning that has to be done you know to get on with this stuff it's not only right. so especially if you're not a digital native i mean people in in my age uh, and and older you know suddenly will get into all of this and sit with the mouse and click around and try to figure out how things works uh, you know that that is there's a lot of challenges in that so that's yeah yeah so it's really very important that we invest in uh, in the solutions that we'll be using uh, especially in this uh, time because the very important thing in that is security and access um not just access but it has to be integrated with all the tools that we will be having right and yeah. so yeah yeah can we, i just when you i just one thing when you say invest i i think that the the interesting thing is today like what akfas was mentioning earlier is that the investment is not uh, you know something that you do uh, up front and yeah. uh, you 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 have 10 people you give the microsoft office to 10 people and you pay monthly for that and sure. then tomorrow you need to add another 200 people you can scale and you can add that so the same thing as we said before when we open an office everybody needs a desk everybody needs a chair everybody needs a telephone you know that's an investment that you do for an employee now you need to do the same investment but just in a different product so right. you know the same way as we have secured our offices we have a guard standing outside or we have surveillance cameras and uh, all this uh, uh your uh, security systems around we have a fingerprint we have a, a access card all that investment has been done in the in that facility now that has mm-hmm. to be moved to another type of facility which is the work from home facility that we need to secure you know hundreds or thousands of employees uh, but it can all be done you know in a much much more simpler way but you have to have that framework Right. So it's really yeah. just a matter of reallocating and moving from like the, the physical to what we really yes. need at this yes. moment. Yes. Right. Right. 
Yeah, thank you for that, Lars. And so before we open the floor or the line for some questions from the audience, we'd like I'd like to uh, ask this final question to um, Akfash first, right? So how do you see the importance of um, collaboration tools and work from home technologies in this now normal, right? And uh, because we have the remote work set up and it's, it's going to last for the next mo coming months and can you name some specific tools and technologies that you have you, you know really tried and tested that's effective for uh for remote work lovely okay sure thing so i would say it's 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 what we call it's uh, involve or the new way of working right so yeah. uh, when we really look into it uh, uh it's about uh this is where the modern work concepts, you know, kicks in within Microsoft. So it's about reimagining uh, and executing the way we work in the new normal. So when we look into the Microsoft 365, uh, 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 which is the uh, product portfolio for the modern workplace uh, concept, right? It has uh, many different products and tools within uh, it, right? So starting from email or Outlook and Exchange Online, which is the basic requirement for you to communicate and collaborate. And then we have Microsoft Office, which you have the online version as well as the offline version, which can be accessed using multiple devices that you have, let it be a smartphone or a tablet or even your desktop laptop or a Mac uh, that you have. Then you have tools such as SharePoint for portal and workflow uh, uh, solutions for business automation part. Then you have OneDrive to support cloud storage, which can be accessed through multiple devices that you have. But these were uh, there and people were using more and more, right? And then um, uh, tools such as um, Planner, right? So if you are uh, uh, using Planner, which is a high level task management as well as project management tool that's uh, available within M365, which also can be integrated with Teams, by the way. And then right. Power BI, which is uh, uh, another uh, tool uh, which helps to visualize your data. Power Apps, Power Automate, uh, which brings low code, no code uh, uh, apps to your environment, uh, which can be built by citizen developers, you know, similar like you know you me ara las everyone anyone can be a developer now you know, we can create apps and host it uh, uh, within our organizations to simply mm -hmm. automate some of the business processes let it be a, 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 a form for a requisition or stationary request or something like that which supposed to be on on paper or memos or before could be on top of apps now so so when you look at uh, teams, which is the main highlight of the uh, M365 portfolio, as well as uh, 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 the new way of working, right? Teams has shown and has helped millions of companies across the globe to run their businesses and operations remotely using any device that they have uh, uh, in a secure uh, manner, I would say. Teams, you know, like what Lars mentioned earlier, is just not an audio or a video conferencing solution. It's much more than that. It's a, it's it's basically a collaboration hub, uh, which mm -hmm. brings in audio, video conferencing, instant messaging, file sharing, real time collaboration, uh, process and automation through Power App integrations, right? And uh, data visualization with uh, Power BI integration. Teams also has. I think it's, it has more than about four, five hundred apps that are built by Microsoft as well as by other third party like the uh, 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 HCM that you all were talking about. That also could be integrated with Teams, right? And it becomes a platform where people will be able to access that and do their day-to-day -day task. And also, if you really look at uh, Teams, has reached. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's about 115 million daily active users uh, in, in, in a few months back, right? So that means that the growth is continuing and it is growing and a lot of organizations and people are using, uh, uh, you know, uh, to make them more productive. So apart from teams, right? So there are uh, other apps, like I said, Planner is there to integrate your task management and uh, assign tasks and update tasks and so on. Then you have Power BI. But one other thing that I would like to highlight here is, uh, uh, um, uh, which is part of uh, 
Microsoft 365 is my analytics and workplace analytics. Uh, sorry, my analytics. Workplace analytics is separate, but my analytics. So my analytics is a tool which helps to gather insights from your work pattern, right? And it, sh it, it gives you insights on how many emails do you reply a day? How many uh, 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 emails do you receive a day? How many meetings do you have to... Uh, uh, how many? You know, what is your meeting meeting habit? Do you do multitasking? Like, you no, know, while the meeting is going on, do you start emailing? Uh, do you start instant messaging people? Uh, how many people do you collaborate with? Whether how many are external, how many are internal, right? Uh, how many? You know, all these insights, right? What's your work-life balance? Sort of uh, 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 gives you the insights of. Um, what time do you start your work to finish your work? Um, do you work out of office hours and so on and so forth? So this, this tool is something that I really love because it simply shows my work pattern or, or habits and suggests me improvements on work-life balance. I think that that uh, gives a lot of uh, 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 insights um, when I'm working from home, especially uh, because you know. I think you know everyone would agree with this. We come to a place and sit, open our laptops, and when we start work, it just you know, the clock start ticking, and you just go on and go on, and suddenly you see it's it's mid midnight, right? So you need to have that balance. So I think uh, my analytics is one of the great tools that that comes along with uh, uh, Microsoft 365 in order to do that analysis. Of course, workplace analytics is another tool which benchmarks your organization uh, 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 with the total usage of everyone within your organization. So these are uh, tools that could be used in order to see uh, how productive the organization is, as well as the user is, right, from the user's perspective. Yeah. Right. Thank you so much for that, Akpash, and for, you know, really highlighting the, the usage and how helpful these tools are. Um, how about you, Lars? Would you like to add anything to that? Uh, I think that in uh, in sense that uh, I, I have seen that there are so many comments and questions. I think it would be a good idea to answer some of those, if you don't mind. I, I know I'm not the host or the hostess. Yeah, sure. But, uh, uh, you know, rather than us keep on going and talking about our experience, there are some uh, really good questions that we can address directly and maybe just with a short answer. So, so we can cover as much as possible. You can choose, and then you can choose who should answer it, unless it's addressed to somebody directly. No, uh, sure, not a problem. Uh, I'd like to um, ask this question first. It's from Ruhul Islam. Um, his question is, could you please share some ideas for keeping ourselves motivated um, since we are, I think this is since we're encountering COVID-19, also um, encouraging uncertainty? So maybe you can take this on, Lars. Yeah. So I think I think uh, 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 that's about the leadership uh, of the company. You know, we we need to talk to our people, like uh, Ara was mentioning, check in with each other and so on. So uh, uh, to make sure everybody is uh, is is doing well and not having any uh, burnout or any kind of other uh, uh, challenges. Uh, there are problems we can help to solve as a as a company and as a leadership and other problems we cannot really uh, do much more about than to to be the sounding board and uh, give some advice and help out i mean uh, uh, we just have to uh, probably be closer than we than we were before but uh, 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 we cannot solve the situation the problem we under the same kind of uh, uh, government regulations and rules. If we have to stay home, we have to stay home. Uh, I'm the boss or I'm not the boss. It doesn't really matter. So we are all in the same boat in that sense. So let's uh, let's uh, uh, share that uh, 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 with each other. You know. Uh, so so how did you get that? Uh, 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 you know, food. Where did you get that delivered from? Did you order from that company? Sharing those kind of things. So it becomes also like you know you're helping each other in this situation. I don't know if that's exactly. Uh, uh, what the question is about, but I think that's what I, I, I have liked this recommendation. You know, we bake something or we cook something, we share it with the, whoever is around. If there's somebody close by, uh, drop it off in their house and, and things like that. So we become more, uh, I wouldn't say family, but more familiar to each other uh, because uh, other people might not have their family close by. So, yeah. 
Yeah. So it's really building that uh, kind of connection with one another, right? Yeah. Um. Yeah. For, so for the next question, this is from Amina Afroz. Uh, I think we have uh, mentioned this already earlier, but maybe we can elaborate a little bit further. So it says here, um, working from home has no specific office time. As a lot of the of other interruption happening, longer time people working. How can we help to manage work better? Um, would you like to share your thoughts on this, Ara? Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, okay, so I could actually answer this in two ways. So from an employee's perspective and from a manager's perspective. Go ahead. So from an employee's perspective, um, it's very important that you, I guess, communicate properly with, with people at home. Just make sure that you sort of set boundaries as if you are still in, in the office in a way. Just make sure that you um, are clear that especially if you have important meetings or you, you have um, tight deadlines that you really have to um, meet, then just be honest with the people at home and tell them that, you know, I just have to focus on work right now. Let's, you know, let's, let's allocate this time or this, this task, let's move it for later. And this time just allocate for work. So like with anything balance, balance, we say that balance is important, but also it's very hard to achieve. But mm -hmm. one way to do it is just be honest, honest with yourself, be honest with your managers, be honest with um, your family. And from a manager's perspective, to make this easier for your um, for your staff, for your team, um, just be more considerate when you're giving deadlines. Um, take into consideration that they're probably not. If if you say don't don't give them like okay, do this in like two hours because there's no guarantee that they're going to be super focused in that two hours. So um, just have realistic expectations. Um, yeah, and just, again, put yourselves in their shoes. So if you have an important task, just give them a good amount of time so as to not stress the, the, the team out um, excessively. So that's, that's um, my take for that short, short right. answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. And uh, as short as it is, it's actually very meaningful also, Ara. Thank you for that. And well, lastly, we do have here um, a very important question, I think. So it says here, um, if the social distancing policies go on for a while, how do you measure your employees' productivity and eventually review them on that work? Um, so would you like to give, your, um, so give some sense on that, Akfash, before we wrap up? So I think, um, like what Lars mentioned earlier, uh, it's 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 not about whether you clocked in at eight o'clock or five o'clock. You know, you clock out. It's about how productive you are, right? So uh, in today's world, with all the digital transformation happening, with all the tools that are available, right? Wherever you are, whether it is pandemic or not, you know, this was coming anyway. Right, whether in with the pandemic, it just happened uh, much faster. But this was uh, anyway it was to happen, right? I mean, I mean, we had to transform. This is the fourth industrial revolution, so we have to transform with all the digital technologies that are available. So the so so uh, when we are to transform there, there would be uh, 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 ways and means on how productivity productivity will have to be measured. There would be productivity scores coming in. Right to see uh, uh, um, uh, instead of uh, uh, see looking at how many emails you replied, looking at what is the outcome, right? Uh, you know, you you uh, agree and you align with the amount of productivity uh, or uh, what your output needs to be, and with the particular timeline, and then you execute it. Whether you make the call, uh, uh, you know, if it's uh, sales related stuff, whether you go physically and meet the customer, or whether you do it digitally on top of Teams. Right, uh, and have a meeting with the customer, uh, respecting the social distancing uh, policies that's go going on. Right, so in my perspective, whether uh, I have pandemic or not, 
this was coming in anyway so we we have the right tools now uh, of course you know these tools will be evolving over a period of time there is going to be new functions features uh, that's going to come in uh, both you know uh, thinking on the technological side as well as on the uh, well-being side of employees so definitely right so that's my take on it so maybe last could give a, a his omitian as well on this particular question no i i think i i talked about earlier we uh, we need to make sure that uh, uh, more than ever everybody has a clear job description and some clear goals kpis uh, um i think uh, uh, that will work uh, better for the employees uh they will know where they are what they are doing if they are doing well according to what the expectations are and it'll do better for the company as well because we have uh, understood what is our agreement on what need to get done uh and then uh, review that uh, uh, on a regular basis uh, meaning that you know once a week have a sync up session how are you doing with your projects and things like this uh eventually we'll have to do a, a you know ongoing kind of performance evaluation or whatever is the structure that the company has is it, if it's annual quarterly or monthly or or rolling I, I, you know whatever that is eventually we will have to build up to that and say are you doing your job are you delivering the uh, the agreed uh, uh, you know task that uh, was expected from you uh, and and uh, uh, that should be fairly clear for the employee i mean otherwise you are kind of working in the dark and you are just waiting for the a uh, year and report card and have no idea where you are uh, you know you need to have that uh, gauge on a regular basis how well you're doing and what your expectations especially in this situation all right yeah well thank you so much for those wonderful insights um ara akfash and lars um unfortunately that's all the time that we have left and so if you have any other questions that we have yet to answer feel free to drop them here um or send them to aliana@techonglobal.com and we'll be sure to get to them. And uh, of course, um we will we would like to help you establish a flexible work organization for your business so that we can guarantee continuous operations and employee engagement. So you can uh, email us at again aliana@techonglobal.com and we'll be happy to um give you this free one-on-one -on -one consultation. All right? And so that's it. Thank you very much, Ara, Lars, and Akfash for joining us. And thank you, of course, to our audience for tuning in as well. So we hope that you enjoy this talk. You uh, learned a lot. And we look forward to seeing you in the next one. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you. Have a great Bye. day, everyone. Thank you very Bye. much. Thanks, everyone. Thank, thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.